Slowpoke. Friendly and very slow moving. He is shaped like a friend. Hey, welcome back to Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we fought a very confusing Koga. I do not understand why he was the way that he was, but it is what the universe dictated. Here, take my money. Oh, I wonder how much money I'll have at the end of the day here. So, the Safari Zone is a thing that's kind of phased out of Pokemon. In my opinion, for the better. Because while the idea of the Safari Zone is fun, playing the Safari Zone... Basically, I can't catch any of the Pokemon here with my own Pokemon. I have to either throw a ball... Oh, hey, Cubone. Bait, rock, or run. Um, raw dogging a ball is just its, its catch rate. Try to get it. Throwing a rock at it makes it likely to run away from you, but easier to catch. What TM is that? Egg Bomb! Isn't that, like, only learnable by Chansey and Execute? Anyways. Um, throwing bait at it makes it, um, harder to catch, but less likely to run away. That's the only thing you can do. This entire area is an RNG crapshoot. I don't know what's smarter to, like, or what for Tauros. So... And a lot of rare and powerful Pokemon can be caught here. And, excuse me, and you're just at the mercy of the game. It decides what you do and don't get. You could be here for 30 minutes. You could be here for 30 hours. Who knows? And you have to pay for entry. Yeah, this area is... I mean, it's fun for a little bit. If you're just going through the Safari Zone from point A to point B, it can be fun. If you're trying to catch everything the Safari Zone has to offer, it's going to be quite difficult. And you might grow to resent this area. I'll be honest. When I, a few years ago, I played through Gen 3. And I got a completed Gen 3 Dex by myself. For those of you that don't know, that is very difficult to do. You need to play like five or six different games, play some of them multiple times, catch really low catch rates, really low encounter rates. And rather than go through the Safari Zone, I played through the entirety of XD. So that is all the Safari Zone Pokemon. All right. So, this is an egg, but it evolves into a coconut tree. Coconut. Coconut Fred. All right. Got it. There we go. We did not get very far. S and more eggs. All right, well, leaving. No, I'm not! This Nidoran just had to see- I don't know why I'm complaining about Pokemon showing up in a wild Pokemon catching game. Like, that is kind of ass backwards of me. Um, but what you have to do for this area is get to the end to get Surf. That's all you have to do here. What, what, what TM is 40? You also get some TMs over here, and they can be kind of nice. Skull Bash! That's... That's a shitty move. Protein, though. Hold on, what, what, what are my Pokemon do I want to drug? Who can use more physical attack? Owen. Um... Yeah. And then, you oh, you also need the gold teeth for strength. So, like, you have to come here. But... You don't have to stick around. And the gold teeth are just down here. You literally have to see them on the way to surf. I don't know why... Like... 
in, in my mind, it would be smarter to, um... Have the two items you need to uh, double team? No. I think I'll have enough room for uh, Surf. In my mind, it would have been smarter to have the Gold Teeth and Surf on, like, different ends of the area, so that you actually have to explore the entire Safari Zone. Like, I don't know, put them- put the Gold Teeth down there, and then, um... Ugh. Gold teeth, and then have the surf room right here, because you access this same part from two completely different areas. Oh, I think that would have been cool. So, now we can surf! And we get the pleasant surf music. Oh, that's done. So we've got everything we need from here. Now we're just gonna kinda... waste time and try and catch some Pokémon. That is not something new and interesting that I want. I guess I can go for items, actually. As you can see, there are a lot of fucking items in this place. Oh, whoa, a Marowak! Uh, sure, I'll go for that. Alright, well. What if I throw a rock at you? Alright, now I will try to catch you. Alright, well that didn't work. How would I do it again? Okay. Well, I see you weren't a fan of that. Alright, Nidoran Mail, look. I'm trying to get items, trying to be entertained. I'm gonna do a huge cut where I sit here for what'll probably be three hours. Cubone. You know, what if I just catch a high-level Cubone, level it up once, and say I caught a Marowak here? No one will be any the wiser. What do you got? Max Revive, okay. This is the way back to the starting area. Where there is probably... Yeah, more Pokemon, more items. A Paris! Ooh! Leaving. How many more steps do I have? 91! I should be able to, um... I think I can catch one more thing. No more room for items. The fuck TM am I holding on to here? Oh, double edge. I still maybe might want that. Swift. Let's toss Swift. Goodbye, Taylor. A nugget! Ah, oh, that's kind of worth it. Give me more sweet moolah. Purple. Let us surf and go on a journey. Uh, more eggs! Wonderful! Get me out of here. Um, anything that's worth having? No. Holy shit, that level, though. Level it up once, you've got yourself a level 37 Nitto Queen. That's pretty cool. Alright, Nidoran male. Like, the only thing I've caught on camera is a fucking execute. Can you give me something cooler to try and catch? Not Paris. I do not want Paris. I want whatever this is. I do! Rhyhorn! I'm gonna throw a rock at the rock. And I'm gonna throw a ball at it. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Right, horn was caught. Now... It has a horn. Um... It's the Spikes Pokemon? What's the spikiest thing I can think of? Have you seen his hair? Alright. We've got 22 steps left to find gold. I know I can- I know- I know there's more in here. Not the fucking execute again. Got away safely. Oh, thank god. 
I'm just terrified of those eggs. Nader and Mail, I don't care about you. Welcome to the Safari Zone experience. What the fuck did I just say? We leave. And we really do leave. Alright. I'm gonna go do this for five more hours. See you in a bit. I don't know why eggs become a coconut tree, but quite honestly, Exeggutor is one of the hardest hitting psychic types you can get, losing out in raw power only to Alakazam and to Mewtwo. It hits hard, it's really bulky too. Since special is the same for defense in this generation, it's good on that front, and it has really high health and defense too. Its only problem is its move pool is entirely based on TMs for offensive moves. Utility-wise, it gets Hypnosis and the Powders and Leech Seed by leveling up, but if you want this thing to do damage at a reliable rate, you're gonna have to use the Psychic TM on it. Which is fine. I think that's fine. Exeggutor is one of the best Psychic types you can get, and his crippling 4 times weakness to bug moves doesn't matter when bug moves aren't real in this generation. Rhyhorn and Rhydon hit like fucking trucks. They have one of the highest attack stats in Generation 1, and have one of the highest defense stats in Generation 1. Combined with really good HP, this thing is a physical monster. It's not perfect, though. Rhydon is slow as molasses, being outsped by pretty much everything, and its special is abysmal, which sucks, because its special move pool is ridiculous. Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Surf, Fire Blast, I don't know why it gets those moves, but it does. But even with those weaknesses, Rhydon is one of the most powerful Pokemon you can put on your team. The only problem is, it does take to level 42 to evolve. But, if you can get Rhyhorn there, which admittedly Rhyhorn isn't necessarily that weak, the payoff is worth it. Oh, and uh, you have to use the Dig, Earthquake, and Rock Slide TMs to give it stab moves. But using TMs to get Pokemon stab moves is kind of par for the course, I'm realizing. Tauros hits hard, and Tauros hits fast. That's really all you need to know. It's really good for speed and attack, don't exactly complement its move pool too well. Especially its level up move pool is atrocious. Like, it gets Tail Whip and then Leer. Two moves that do the same fucking thing. Ugh. You need to use TMs on this thing. But if you do, you've got yourself a hard hitter for normal type moves, and Earthquake. You pretty much have to give it the Earthquake TM to give it any kind of coverage, whatsoever. It does get a really good special move pool, and unlike a lot of the other normal types that get that, its special stat is... eh? 75? It's not good, but it's not terrible. Yeah, Tauros is definitely a fine addition. He just desperately needs a move pool to exist. Chansey is actually pretty solid in this generation. Still sporting ridiculously high HP, I mean that's never changed. But now, since special defense and special attack are the same thing, Chansey's special attack is really good. And combining that with a really good special move pool, all learned through TM sadly, and Chansey can hit pretty hard and never die against special attackers. Its defense is worse than Caterpie's. If you want this thing to survive physical hits, it's not going to. So just know what you're sending it into, and chance it'll do pretty well. Yeah, no, nothing else to really add. Pretty good. Yeah. In my opinion, the cream of the mono-normal type Safari Zone crop is Kangaskhan. It's surprisingly fast, really bulky, it's really good, and has a pretty good move pull, able to learn Rock Slide, Submission, and Earthquake, in addition to pretty good normal type moves. All in all, Kangaskhan comes out the box pretty good and stays pretty good the entire time. There's not really a whole lot to add about it, it's just a pretty damn good Pokémon. Dragonite. One of, if not the most powerful Pokémon in all of Generation 1. I actually wouldn't recommend trying to raise one. First of all, you can't catch its pre-evolution, Stratania Dragonair, at any level higher than 15 and you need to trudge along that Dragonair until level 55. Like, that's not a level you'll feasibly reach at any point that makes it worth it. This isn't like later Pokemon games where there's a post-game where Dragonite can shine. Once you beat the Elite Four, you're kinda just catching Pokemon. 
Like, Dragonite is not going to be around very much to do anything. It's a phenomenal Pokemon. Great move pool, insane stats. I just wouldn't recommend training one for the game single player. Later generations, yes, you've got the Sevi Islands to go through. Like, Dragonite's great in other games. I just don't think he's worth it in this one. God damn is Scyther in need of a move pool. It's only thing it can really do is Slash. Which isn't terrible, especially with how crits work in this generation. But it's got an incredible base attack. A phenomenal base speed, and Slash really is just the best move it can use. It gets no flying type moves, no bug type moves, it gets Swords Dance and Agility, which I don't know why you would need Agility on this thing, but Swords Dance and Slash, like it can definitely work, it's just that's the only thing it can do. An effective Pokemon, but not one that offers very much flexibility. Pinsir is in the exact same boat as Scyther, if only a little bit better off. It trades away some of Scyther's speed for more bulk and more power, and it actually has another move it can use other than just normal type moves. Submission. Which is something. Yeah, it's still not the greatest of move pools, but normal and fighting, it can do enough for you. It's still a solid Pokemon. It's just really in desperate need of X Scissor to exist, which would not happen for like 10 years. So, uh, good luck, Pinsir. You'll need it. Tangela learned growth at level 49 in red and blue, but it was altered to level 48 in yellow. That's the most interesting thing I can say about Tangela. It's a powder using grass type. If you've wanted that on your team, You've had the access to Venusaur, Victory Bell, and Vileplume for so long now. Tangela doesn't do that job particularly better than any of them. In fact, I'd wager to say it does it worse in terms of stats. It's... it's not that good. Like, wait until Platinum gives you Tangrowth. Until then, Tangela... it's not terrible, it's just incredibly outclassed. So remember a few episodes when I was saying how Poliwrath was kind of a water type that was a jack of all trades, master of none? Golduck is kind of the same exact thing. It doesn't have a bad stat, even though it doesn't really have a good one, but it does have a pretty good move pool. If you want to take advantage of its attack, it gets Dig and Submission, which, you know, those can work. If you want to take advantage of its special attack, it gets Confusion, Surf, and Ice Beam, so that can work too. Golduck doesn't do any one job particularly well, but it does all jobs... decent. I have no idea why this line isn't a Psychic type though, like the entire thing is Psyduck can use Confusion due to its headaches, and it's not a Water Psychic type? Like fucking Starmie had to be Water Psychic, but God forbid Psyduck is not Psy-Kick. What the fuck? Now this guy... This fucking guy is an absolute unit. The Slowpoke line is very obvious in what it does. It's slow, but it hits pretty good and can really take a hit. Slowbro's bulk is amazing, and its special, while not as high as you would think, is still really good. Its move pool is also amazing, getting access to Amnesia, which I've gone on and on about how great of a move that is in this gen, Psychic naturally, though level 55, like I said with Dragonite, it's a little too late. It also gets uh, Ice Beam, Fire Blast, it's just a really, really good Pokemon. If you don't mind using some of the slower Mons, Slowbro will definitely get the job done for you and he'll get it done really well. If I wasn't already using Snorlax, I'd probably be using a Slowbro. Magmar is a very simple fire type. It hits fast and it hits decently hard. It doesn't have one really great offensive stat, in exchange for having both offensive stats be pretty good. Its special move pool consists of only Fire-type moves and Psychic, but honestly, Fire-type moves and Psychic is really all you need, and physically, you can get normal moves, and Submission. And Submission. All in all, Magmar is a pretty good Fire-type, though if you're catching one in yellow, you might not want to use it for a reason I'll get into later. For those wondering, it took me about 10 times in the Safari Zone 
which was actually less than I was expecting, but it took a while. Alright, before we let's get into all the nicknames. Um, starting with the Pokemon that you can catch only with Surf. I caught a Slowbro, nicknamed it Zemnis, um, because Slowbro can't feel pain, and the Nobodies from Kingdom Hearts can't feel emotion. That's where I went with that. Uh, Yoko Taro is my Slowpoke. Uh, Slowpoke likes to fish. Yoko Taro notoriously loves putting fishing minigames in his games. That's where that comes from. Um, McCreefin, one of my, um, Twitch... Uh, one of my fans wanted me to name a Slowpoke after him. I forgot. So, I just want to let you know, McCreefin. I'm thinking of you. Um, Go uh, Golduck and Psyduck were named Howard the Duck, off the comic character, and Donald Duck, if I have to fucking tell you who Donald Duck is. Um, Lloyd was my Scyther. Scyther has two swords. Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia, he uses two swords to fight. That's that one came in from. Uh, Cleopatra is a nickname recommended for me for Tangela by my buddy Leland. He said that, like, a patch is something used to cover yourself. Tangela covers itself in vines. Eh. That's kind of cool. I liked it. Booster. What the hell was this? Booster. Oh, Booster! Booster from um, Super Mario RPG. He liked collecting beetles. Um, and though it's not the type of beetle that Pinsir is, um, it was the closest thing I could think of. Chicago is my Taurus. He's a bull. Chicago Bulls are a basketball team. That's what that was. Kangaskhan's a kangaroo. Kangaroo Jack was a movie I liked as a kid. I really should not watch it now as an adult. I don't think it's a good movie holding up. But, um, Dratini, I nicknamed Bantu. Is this a dragon there? Whatever. Uh, Bantu is a dragon for Fire Emblem. I don't think I need to tell you that. Chansey is my, ro a Robotnik is my Chansey. Eggs, Eggman, that fits. Uh, the Marowak I caught was Sir Daniel from Medieval. He's the skeleton main character. Again, like I did with Cubone, I went with the skeleton motif rather than, I think the Marowak line is a dinosaur. Um, Seat the Scaleless is a dragon from Dark Souls. That's what I nicknamed the Dratini. Um, and you were there for Yugi Moto, who was the Rhyhorn. And Coconut Fred. So, with all of that done... Let's, uh, let's go get a new item. Because since we got the golden teeth, we have to go up here. Hello there, Mr. Warden, who has a unique sprite. <clears throat> I don't know why he got one. Anyways, give me strength. This lets us move boulders around. It's used... I believe it's not required until the Victory Road. Like, you need it in Seafoam Islands and Victory Road, and Seafoam Islands is an optional dungeon. So... Oh, Owen! Time to use that big body of yours. Put it to work. Alright. And then... Yeah, you can't hit the A button and then use strength like you can in l later games. You use strength in the menu, and then it's on for the whole time. No more room for items. Are you... Are you kidding me? What's this, TM? Double-ed... Didn't I buy a fuck ton of full heals? I did. Alright, you know what? The three paralyzed heals, toss them. A rare candy. We are going to use that rare candy. And get ourselves... A nice, sexy... Charizard! Who is the final member of the team? With his evolution, we have the team. It is complete. And now we can teach it fly. Boot up an HM, contain fly. I can't believe that Charizard couldn't fly in Gen 1. That is crazy to me. 
And you find a delete scratch. Incredible. So. I think it's about time we address the elephant in the room. The elephant of... Why the fuck was Magmar in the character section? Or Pokemon section? Well... You, if you know this game, you might know that Magmar is unobtainable. Like, you cannot catch Magmar in Pokemon Yellow. However, I am here to inform you that it's a lie. You all, uh... Y'all might remember this place. This is the Mew Glitch. We're gonna do it again. So, hello there, good sir. Allow me to, um... Fly away. Yep. Yeah. Nope. So, I've had this glitch explained to me. And I kinda get it. So, the reason we can't do anything with, like, A and B and whatnot is the game thinks a trainer is walking at you. And we need to fix that. Like, we need to get a trainer... To walk. This man, for example. And the reason that certain Pokemon show up there... And that has to do with the special stat of the Pokemon I'm fighting. And it's like... It's because... If I'm trying to remember this correctly. In the game's code... The Pokemons... All, every Pokemon is like, when it's entered into the game, is registered to a number. It's the order they were put into the game. Uh, fun fact, the first Pokemon programmed into the game, into the Pokemon series, was Rhydon. So, that number is kept in the same place as the special stat. So that's why if you have the special stat link up to that Pokemon, you'll get that Pokemon. Um, so, that's that. We defeat that Dodrio. And then... We, uh, then try to go back to where we... Um, where the trainer started. So that Dodrio's special stat. Specifically that Dodrio. When we attempt to go back to the route... Will cause the appearance of Magmar. Because they're kept in the same place in the data. Allowing us to obtain a completely unobtainable Pokemon. So we will use Hypnosis. Alright, let me try that again. We will use Hypnosis. Alright, let me try that again. We will use Hypnosis. There we go. And then catch a Pokemon that couldn't be caught normally. Though, um, if you like Magmar and want to use him in-game... Yellow's not the place to do it. Because Magmar can only be caught... You're making this difficult, aren't you? Magmar can only be caught in regular play in Pokemon Mansion when he's high 30s in level. So because you can only catch him then, the developers didn't really, like, try to give him a move pool for early levels, because why would they? You'd never see him. So his move pool right now is Ember, and then nothing until level 36 when he gets Smokescreen. Yeah. What am I going to nickname Magmar? Simple. As soon as I pause this video to figure out what the fuck it was. Yeah, his Japanese name is Boober. That's too good for anything that I could try to come up with. And I need to change box, because that box is actually full, and I need to change that before I forget. Because Pokemon box management in this game is uh, a little annoying to do. You, Oh, right! I also caught a Parasect. I nicknamed it Stubbs, because the uh, mushroom has kind of turned Paris into a zombified... Um, a zombified bean? Stubbs the zombie? That's where that came from. Why is he put in box 12? Well, I put a few Pokemon there, but they're not important to talk about right now. 
We'll worry about them later. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. So now that we've uh, gotten all that established, it's time to actually progress with the game. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, so are we going to surf some way with the new surf move we got? No. You don't actually have to use surf. The, um, You didn't even have to go to Fusia for the next part of the game. You, have to, you, don't have to, you don't need surf until much later. Hey, guy that we will certainly be fighting a lot more. Oh! Fucking take this lemonade I have. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that guard won't go through, let you through, until you give him a drink. So now that we're in Saffron City, that's a very important house, but we'll get to that in a moment. Oh, hey, guy! Hey, buddy! Team Rocket, dude! Um... I need to store my items, because I'm about to get a lot of items in the next dungeon. Uh, not, not bills. Damn it. Stevs. Um, you can just go here whenever the fuck you want, really. Uh, and, oh, right. And... The reason... That I left the trainers in, um... I guess the super route's fine. In Cycling Road, up is because you need to have a trainer walk to you to be able to use the pause menu again. However, once that trainer walks to you, you are then able to, um... You're then able to just do whatever the hell you want. Like, you can fight anything before going back to the route where you fought, where you, um, you just have to go back to where the, the first trainer you flew away from is. So because of that, I needed to leave up trainers that I could walk to, to get that glitch to work. And, um... Oh shoot, hang on, I forgot the, the house. So, this house is one of the most important houses in the game. You can, um... You can get the TM for Psychic, which is probably the best move in the game. It's 100 accuracy, Psychic type attack, very good power. You just get it for free in this generation. Later Pokemon games would realize that's a little tough. And now we get Silphco. The next dungeon. Also, I won't be using the Psychic TM. I I don't think so. Hypno gets Psychic easily enough. And we'll worry about that later. So Silphco has a funny little gimmick that I'm going to be completely ignoring. But not this rocket dude. He, he's... I gotta fight him. Oh, Golbat? Okay. Well, eat a super effective hit, you dumb bitch. Perfect. Whoa, nice! Didn't expect to level up that fast. Oh, you led with the Golbat, and now all you have are the weak-ass Zubats. Is that how we're doing this? Is, is this the game we're playing? Let me guess, it's the game we're playing. It's the game we're playing. Welcome to the feud! Where we beat the shit out of bats for five minutes. Come on. Ooh, eradicate! Hold on, that's different. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Wow, I don't get out of here. Pepe is too strong for you. And here's the other rat. Or bat. Ugh. Not rat. Trust me. I'll find a Team Rocket dude with rat. Rats and bats. That's this team's motto. Alright, we defeated Team Rocket. Woo. I goofed. So this thing's gimmick is, um... Funny floor panels. You step on these and get warped away to a, like, each panel links up to a different panel. On a different floor of this 12-floor building. In my opinion, the ideal way to get through Silphco is ignore it. Don't fuck with the teleportation panels. You don't have to. Just go up, slaughter all the rocket grunts on a floor. Oh, come on, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. <sighs> what, are you gonna paralyze me? Okay, no, well, I was ready for it. Um, and then just periodically slaughter every floor. 
Um, because of the other gimmick of this place, is there are special wall doors that can only be opened with a specific key that's on a random ass floor that you just need to walk to. So just go up the floors. It it doesn't matter. All right, Magneton. Ooh, this should be interesting. That's a powerful boy right there. Or girl? Boy, girl, and... The left one's a he, the right one's a she, and the top one's a they. That's what I'll say. Down it goes. Is that a level up for Pepe? It sure is. I defeated Scientist. I am good, thank you. So, Pokemon Switch... Purple. Purple can get a lot of experience. It's all his. Hello there, other Rocket Grunt. No kids are allowed in here. Well, no kids were allowed in your hideout in Celadon, and it kind of just walked in the front door. Because there's only one door. Like, you guys really need to have a fire plan. Like, you are not OSHA safe. And there's Surf. It's just going to one shot. That Cubone's so fucking hard. Get out of here! And now you're gonna use a Zubat? Hmm. I want. Oh yeah, I taught him Mega Drain, because I forgot to do that. I should have done that way sooner. But, you know, better late than never. Okay. Rocket has been defeated. Yeah, tough, buddy. Um. Yeah, the card keep. Like this one. I can't open this door without the card key. Or that door. I could be using the warp panels to see through and, like, get around. That just gets confusing. If you just go up the stairs, don't go on a warp panel, you can get through this place with a much easier um, understanding. Also doesn't help that all the floors look the same. But, you know, it's the Game Boy. Like... Am I expecting intricately designed dungeons for the fucking Game Boy? Nah, they're fine. Old Surf's animation was... Kinda neat. Even though I think it's also used by Toxic. For some fucking reason. Alright, what's next? A Hypno. That might actually be scary, because you can use Confusion and a Surf won't knock you out in a single shot. But a Surf will probably knock you out in two shots. Alright, you know what? Time to fucking put that flute to work. Why is it so quiet? Boom. Um, from what I understand, if it says all sleeping Pokemon woke up, that means that when an opponent is asleep? And it'll wake them up? I wonder. Down you go. And then we have another rat. Like I said, rats and bats. Team Rocket motto. Yep. And down. Alright, I gained some experience. I defeated Rocket. Now I can't go through that door. I go down here and to the right. A warp panel I'm not fucking with. I go over here to the left. Warp panel I'm not fucking with. Alright, the only place left I can go right now is up here to the left. And there's a warp panel I'm not fucking with. So then I go over to here. I go up these stairs and I end the episode. Hey, I have a Patreon, and if you want to give me money and help support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Link's in the description. I also have a Discord server, so you can be cool there too. Alright, time for the end of the episode, meme. I know that's why you're here.